We established Inika in 2015 and uh, over the last uh, seven years we've been primarily focused on preservation of our textual heritage uh, intellectually, uh, culturally and uh, spiritually. But uh, last year uh, I had the uh, good opportunity to meet with Sunny uh, Narang and uh, Akanksha. Uh, Sunny is, has actually been working in the craft sector for almost uh, uh, 30 years. He's nurtured several entrepreneurs, enterprises, mentored several of them, invested in several of them. And Akanksha has been a documentary uh, filmmaker. So we got uh, talking and one of the things personally for me was uh, the craft tradition. I uh, actually live in Singapore. Uh, I visit uh, Bali regularly and I always found that the way Bali has been able to preserve the craft tradition, um, so the way art, craft and design come together uh, is something very unique. So I was talking to uh, Sunny and Akanksha about them and then we decided that we should uh, set up this center for uh, embodied knowledge, uh, primarily focused on non-textual heritage uh, of India. And we also were very clear that we wanted to create rasikas. That was also our primary uh, goal. Apart from uh, research, making craftsmen uh, own up their uh, traditions also, various aspects we had uh, as our mission. And uh, we started uh, with a grant and we looked at how we can uh, relearn from from the Western uh, museums, uh, uh, from our own craft, how we can uh, bring it back from the Western museums. And there's a project that we have uh, funded there. We also funded a craftsperson in uh, uh, Siv Gopal Reddy in Kandol. And uh, this project uh, with uh, Nalina. Uh, Nalina and I know each other for almost uh, uh, six, seven years now. And when she approached uh, saying that, look, uh, this is an uh, event that she wants to do, Chins to Prince. Uh, we readily agreed to it. It, 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 it. it is at multiple levels that this whole uh, workshop uh, resonated with us. First, uh, I have an entrepreneurial background and one of the power plants that I was actively involved in at uh, the very beginning in 2000 was in a village uh, called Pedana uh, in Andhra Pradesh where uh, Kalankari uh, uh, is one of the primary uh, centers for Kalankari. Apart from that, we also are focused on bridging knowledge, bridging civilizational knowledge and reaching out uh, to the other parts of the world. And this particular thing, the way uh, Nalina has actually brought together, uh, brought together the European, uh, the, the batik from uh, uh, Indonesia and the uh, chins from India, the way she curated this immediately appealed to us because what we believe uh, is that knowledge has to be studied. Uh, so far it's been studied civilizationally or it's now being studied geographically but we believe knowledge has to be studied for humanity at a whole. The human civilizational knowledge chronologically has to be studied. So we are trying to make some effort towards that by integrating the intellectual aspects of the knowledge. Uh, like chronologically, how was math, uh, how did math progress? Chronologically, how did science progress? Similarly, this particular project is a material, bridging together material uh, cultures, material uh, civilizations. So we have three. We have a Western civilization and they have output. We have Indian civilization and we have uh, what's happened in uh, Indonesia. And the, the partnership with Peter, Peter Lee, who is, is a phenomenal uh, collector. I'm sitting here in this uh, studio and the kind of effort that he has put uh, collections and curations and is an extraordinary uh, uh, person. And uh, the, it, it's so coincidental that uh, he has works uh, of the European roller prints, uh, the, uh, the chins from India and the batik from uh, Indonesia. So you can clearly see how that uh, cross-civilizational 
uh, influence has been. So this, this uh, supporting this workshop, supporting Nalina's work uh, has been uh, really uh, a very um, an exciting project for us. Uh, personally, uh, and, and uh, Sunny and uh, Akaksha, we, we all enjoyed interacting with Peter and uh, we look forward to many more such uh, collaborative works. At Indica and CK, our primary goal is to fulfill a seeker's quest. It is not a, a career-oriented education, but it's education for a seeker, somebody who is, has a quest. Somebody who has a quest for knowledge because they have a quest. They have a quest for and they have a passion for knowing more. And to expose them about these cross-cultural influences and also bringing together a collector, bringing together an artist uh, from India, uh, we, it, it again fits with uh, what we are trying to do. And uh, we are very happy with the, how uh, successful this uh, project has been. And actually we are looking forward. Uh, to more such engagements uh, between India and ASEAN countries and see how, um, how these uh, cross-cultural uh, influences have uh, flown across uh, time. Collecting to me has been about documentation and getting hold of resources before they disappear. As an art historian, and as a historian, I always find that uh, we just don't have enough access to our own histories. And the only way we can really get a good sense of the past is by knowing all the little stories. Textiles falls under this category. Um, the more little stories we have, micro histories, the better perspective we get about the past. When I first became a collector, it was pretty random. I would just be looking for things that caught my eye and slowly a picture would emerge. Often it, it would be trial and error and of course sometimes I made mistakes. But sometimes my mistakes turn out to be interesting. So for example, I was initially fascinated about the kalamkaris that were exported to Sumatra. And among the pieces I bought were actually early copies made in Europe. And I, I didn't really see the difference initially. And over time, you know, when you look at, at enough pieces, and I think that's also important, the frenzy uh, led to this sort of hoarding and the acquisition of uh, too many pieces. But the positive outcome of that is having a good eye and knowing what's Kalam Kari. And ultimately, clearly, there were pieces I thought were Kalamkaris, which turned out not to be, but it was still a win-win because it um, exposed me to a completely different history that is so related to Kalamkaris. And then it led me to make further connections with Batik. And um, I found that I was uh, looking at textiles that each sort of resonated with each other or shadowed each other. and. There, there were very deep conversations between these three types. I was very happy to share the outcome of all this accumulation and sorting out. And uh, it gave me great pleasure if uh, a participant understood and could see the difference and, and appreciated what I was trying to say. And I thought what was actually also a good process was to try and not lay on too much uh, politics over this material. The history is, the histories of these textiles are kind of complicated, and but but uh, we kind of have to accept that that's what happened in the past, and we have all this stuff. We have to be aware of all the problems associated with how they came about, but nevertheless, they still become part of our sort of design history. Personally, I feel decolonializing is really not about flattening the past, right? It's about understanding its complexities um, and also trying to undo a little bit of uh, the blaming um, because the more we look at it, 
it, the, it, you can't really paint a black and white picture of bad and good and it's, it's often so many people are complicit in, in, in all the bad things as well as the good things. So uh, I think the textiles allow us to take a step back, focus on the connections while understanding that the ground isn't so pristine, you know, but which past is clean. I've always believed in the fact that we should collect for our nation. Um, but increasingly, I'm thinking that that can actually happen in many forms. Um, I like the way I'm showing the textiles now, and I learned that from a great mentor from Hyderabad, Mr. Jagdish Mittal. This way, by having it at home, it's so accessible. Anyone who wants to come and see the textiles is very welcome to visit me. And I like that it's just a house space collection. Of course, I take some steps to ensure that they don't degrade. Uh, we have uh, some climate control here, etc., and humidity. So they're fairly safe here. And at the same time, people who visit can handle the material and uh, we can look at a lot of stuff, make a huge mess and then after that it's quite easy to keep everything back. So um, as long as I'm able to, I would love to carry this on.